Hello Infiniteers and welcome to my 100th episode of Toy Box Tutorials. <laughs> I don't think I will ever hit this milestone with any other series and I couldn't let this go by without marking this occasion with a small celebration. So before we get into today's episode, I thought it would be fun to put together a short montage featuring some of my favorite moments in this series. We've come a long way in 100 episodes, and we've learned how to do some really neat things in the toy box with creative toys like the Path Creator, Target Camera, Remote Controller, Economy Toys, and so many others. So sit back for a couple of minutes and enjoy this little trip down memory lane with me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little montage. <laughs> There's a lot of neat things in there that we built, and if you have not been following this series since the beginning, I encourage you to go back and start with episode one. And I know there's a lot of episodes there to watch, but if you follow along through each episode, you're going to learn how to build all of those amazing toy boxes that you saw, and more importantly, how to use all the creative toys that you'll need to do it. Well, I think it's time to get back to our scheduled video. And today I'm going to wrap up our discussion of the Toy Box Economy System in Disney Infinity 3.0. And I'm going to do that by addressing a question that I've been asked a lot recently, which is, how would you use this to build a game like Dreamlight Valley in the Disney Infinity 3.0 Toy Box? Well, first, let me begin by saying there are some things you can do in Dreamlight Valley that you just cannot do in Disney Infinity 3.0. For example, there is no way to purchase or apply clothing or accessories to customize the characters. You can't even sell packs or tools, and so you're pretty much limited to the appearance of the character as they look here. You can't change that in any way. Also, there is no way to do things like cooking, or fishing, or interior decorating. But there are some things that I believe you can do. 
you can build a house and decorate your yard and alter the world somewhat. You can grow crops to sell and you can do some limited crafting. But the thing is, you're not going to be able to do it exactly like Dreamlight Valley. You're going to have to do it differently in Disney Infinity. And if you're not hung up on doing things exactly like Dreamlight Valley, then I think you may be surprised by what you can actually do. And so I've put together a small toy box here in order to demo my ideas. And I call this Dream Like Valley. L-I-K-E. Dream Like Valley. <laughs> and um, I will not be doing a How to Build series for this toy box because it's just a proof of concept. But after the demo, I will show you how to do the logic so that you can build your own world. And I will also have logic diagrams on my blog for everything that I show you today. And uh, when we get to the logic portion of this, you may want to reference those diagrams on my blog as we go along. So in my little sample toy box, Mickey and Goofy have inherited this little plot of land over here. And they've decided to build a house on it and farm it. And so we're going to go into town first of all. Because as you notice in the upper left, we don't have a lot of money. <laughs> There's not much there. But we have a couple of shopkeepers. We have Felix over here. Who is selling houses and roofs and house pieces that we can build. And uh, this is just a small sampling. You can add all kinds of things uh, to this that you want and make as an elaborate house as you want. But I thought this was enough to get the idea across. And of course, we don't have any money to be able to afford any of these things right now. And then we have Giselle over here, who's our local plant keeper. And she sells all kinds of plants and decorations that we can use for our yard. And some of those things we can afford, but we can't really do much again with them because we only have 10 gold right now. So we're going to need some money <laughs> before we do anything here. And so first thing I want to do is uh, we'll go off and uh, just explore the world a little bit. There's a place up there. Merlin's Tower is up over here and there's a mine up there. So we're going to go see if we can find some money or a way to earn some money because we can't do much without it. <laughs> kind of like real life, huh? So if we head on into the mine... Woohoo! We struck it rich! And watch as I pick up all of these. Watch the little memory, or the memory, the money meter in the upper left. Each of these gems is worth 10 gold. So, all of a sudden we've got 60 gold. Now we got some money to do something. So that's really good. And uh, let's head up to Merlin's Tower. We'll do that next. Alright, so Merlin is up here. And this is my uh, one of my ideas for how to do crafting. Um, so let's go talk to Merlin. He says, will you help me? And now you'll notice on the radar, down in the lower left corner, we now have three radar markers. So these are the parts that he needs in order to do some crafting for us. So these are the resources we got to go gather. And uh, so we're going to head over to this one first, I think. Over here at the uh, ominous looking fortress. And we got some bad guys here that we can take out. Of course, they each drop a coin so we can earn a little bit of money by doing some good for our society here. <laughs> Taking care of the bad guys. Oops, can't quite get him yet. We'll come back. Whoops. All right, there's another one. Looks like there's a couple of guys down here. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> oh. All right, so we got some 
coins there. There's one more enemy here somewhere. Oops. <laughs> I've been playing uh, Breath of the Wild lately again, and uh, I think I've mentioned this in another episode, but um, the controls are different, so <laughs> I'm trying to jump and I'm hitting my fight key. There we go. All right, so that took care of him. Here's the part. So we've got a gear. And by the way, while we're right here, let's head up to the top of the tower. If you do a little exploring, uh, you can be rewarded. So if we climb up here, here's another gem. So we're starting to get some money now. All right, down in the backyard behind that house, there's another piece that we need. And then the third resource, the third gear, is actually behind the mill over here, where Fixit Felix is. And there we go. So now we have all three of the resources. Now we'll head back to Merlin and see what he can build for us. Of course, you're limited with the resources uh, that you can pick up for crafting because you only have a certain number of collectibles that you can use. And some of them <laughs> may not make a lot of sense for whatever it is you want to do in your game, but. Alright, so back to Merlin, and this time when we come talk to him, he opens up the shop, and now we can buy the Lugga Beast, this mechanical mount, and it doesn't cost us anything, so now we have that in our inventory. So now if we come out of the, or go into the editor, uh, whoops. <laughs> Of course, that's not working for me now. Why is that not working? Oh, because uh, that's right. I got to go talk to Goofy first. Sorry. So I had to limit what the player could do when they could use the editor. And um, so I decided to have Goofy be the one that invokes that. So we can only use the editor over here at the farm when we talk to Goofy. So let's go do that. All right, and Goofy says, let's get started. And now we can place our Lugga Beast. And there we go. Now, talking to Goofy also kicks off farming. So let me talk about that for a minute. Um, we could set up a shop to sell a farming plot the problem is, we cannot sell the crops we would grow on it. Crops in Disney Infinity 3.0 are only used for feeding sidekicks, and so we cannot use the farming system in Disney Infinity to do what we want, but we can build our own. And so what happened was, talking to Goofy opened up the editor here, and um, that's also going to kick off a time delayer when I close the editor. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we got our little lug -a beast over there. That's going to help us get around our toy box quicker. You'll notice the time delayer over there is flashing, so that's going. And so what's going to happen is, after 60 seconds, the crops will appear on this little plot of dirt. And the crops are collectibles that are put down with a replayer. We can then collect them, and the game will auto-sell them as we pick them up. And when all the collectibles are picked up, the time delayer will start again. And so this gives us a steady source of income and kind of simulates farming. And if you wanted to, you could require the player to do a few things before starting that time delayer. You could make them visit a few locations on the field using locators connected to radar markers and dynamic triggers, and that might simulate planting. And then you could maybe require them to throw a sidekick in a well to fetch water. And then after they do that, then you can kick off the time delayer. But this gives you the basic idea. 
So the time delayer just went off and there's our first wave of crops. So now we can run through here and uh, harvest the crops and you'll notice every time we pick one up our money increases by two. So each crop is worth two gold and there's 15 crops on the field so every batch of crops earns us 30 gold. Okay so now all of those are gone and you see the time delayer is going again. And so that is that's it for farming. That's what we're doing there. And as I mentioned, I do have another idea for crafting. Um, I'm gonna, I got another idea that I'm gonna show you next week, but I don't wanna do that today. I just wanna stick with the economy system today. But let's go ahead and hug on, uh, hop on our ride. <laughs> so we can use that to get around the toy box. And you could have uh, Merlin uh, craft anything you want. He could craft a vehicle. He could craft a defensive toy. Um, maybe an enemy robot if you wanted to put him on a team and have him follow you around and kind of be your protector. <laughs> There's all kinds of ideas you can come up with for things you can do. But now that we have a little money, let's go over here to one of the shops. And we'll come over to Felix and let's buy a house. And I can't afford both a house and a roof yet, but we'll go ahead and buy the, uh, let's do, let's do this one. I like that one. So now we own that. And you'll see the money went down by 50 in the upper left. And of course you're limited with the economy system as we've talked about in the last few episodes that it's going to cost us another 50 to actually place the house. So as much as I'd like to go get some plants and things right now and really decorate this up, I don't have the money for that yet. But we can come back over to Goofy. And let's get started, he says. And so now we have our house and we can decide where we want to put it. We can place it anywhere we like. So I think uh, let's place it over here like that. Okay, and you'll see in the upper left our money went down by another 50. And we have four gold left. But our next batch of crops just came in, so we can harvest some more crops. Whoops. <laughs> missed that one. I missed it again. All right, so now we got some money. So now we can head into town and do a little bit more, uh, a little bit more shopping. But I think at this point you pretty much get the idea of what you can do. So we can come to Giselle and uh, let's add a nice little flower bed. So we'll buy that and add it to our, add it to our uh, inventory. <laughs> this thing cracks me up. All right, we come talk to Goofy again. Let's get started. This time we're going to add some flower beds around the house. And you can add as many as you like. You'll notice the memory meter on the left. I do have some memory to work with. And that's one of the things in a toy box like this is you do not want to make uh, this too big. Oh, and I'm trying to place another one, but I don't have the money for it. <laughs> so that's what we've got. But yeah, that's one of the things when you build a, t a toy box like this is you don't want to make it too full. Um, you got to keep it relatively small and compact so that it doesn't take up a lot of memory. But you can pack it with all kinds of activities. And every time we visit the tower up there, there's going to be some enemies. Um, we can add more enemies and more missions and other ways to earn money and things to do. But I think that gives you the general idea here for the game. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is exit out and reload this toy box and we'll talk about the logic. Okay, so now that you've seen my ideas for what you can do, let me give you an overview of the logic and show you how to do it. And once again, let me remind you that I've got logic diagrams on my blog to help you out. So first thing I'm going to do is come over here and turn off my economy system. And these are the same three buttons that we've been using all along in my Dunbrock Defense Toy Box. They're set up the same way. 
and a lot of this part of the logic is going to be very familiar. So this is connected to the level starter, which kicks everything off. This is the button that turns, uh, well, I say kicks everything off, this turns everything on. <laughs> this one turns everything off, and this is my reset button, okay? So a lot of this is the same. We have our money manager, and uh, the way we set this up is identical to what we did in episode 93. There's no difference here, so I'm not going to show you that. And the properties on this are set up the same way. We have our inventory manager, and this is the same as what we did in episode 94 as far as the logic connections. The only difference here is my inventory is empty at the start. The player doesn't start with anything. And then we have our loot drop manager, and this is what we had set up in episode 97. And for the loot pools on this, we have the three enemies from Maleficent's uh, goons. We've got the Gator Goon, Pig Goon, and Vulture Goon. And of course the loot is set for economy. And that's the only loot pool that I have. And properties are set with auto connect off. All the logic connections are the same as what we did in episode 97. We turn it on with the level starter, we turn it off with this button. Okay. Um, the storefronts, these are pretty much the same as what we looked at in episode 95. But let me show you what we've got. I've got actually three shops. So Fix-It Felix is over here. And this is how I set up my shopkeepers. Um, we'll go ahead and do that next. So on my friendly wave generator, that's connected to that locator over there by the mill. Again, I did that with a new locator connection. And under Configure Wave, I added Fix-It Felix from the long list here. Under the Properties, Generation Delay, I took that to zero. And the Generated Friend Options, I set him to Stand Still. And this is the same for all of the shopkeepers, by the way. Just a different character in the Configure Wave. For the Dynamic Trigger, I did a new actor connection and connected that up to the friendly wave generator. And in the properties, I set the target to connected actor, trigger distance 4. And we did a new logic connection when it's entered by player any. And it says just entered any here, but you want to select entered by player any. We go over to our storefront and we open the shopping menu for the host. You can see the yellow connecting line there that goes to the shop and displays the shop. And then on the shop, when the shopping menu is closed, we go to the text displayer there and we say farewell, so long. Okay, so that's pretty easy. The logic connections here are very simple. And under my shop, the manage items for sale, you saw all the things that I had done in here and placed in here. Again, as we saw back in episode 95, you're just going to browse this list and go look for all the things that you want to sell in the shop. And of course you have to turn this on with the level starter and turn it off with that other button. But that's it for the shopkeeper. The logic is very, very simple. And the logic for Giselle is identical. Again, the only difference for her is that's connected to a different locator I've got a different character under Configure Wave. And my shop is set up differently. I have different items for sale here. So those are the shopkeepers. And again, if you followed everything that I did in episode 95, it should be very easy to set all of that up. Um, and again, with this storefront, you gotta set that up uh, with a, start it up with a level starter and make sure you have a way to turn it off with this button. Okay, that's it for the shopkeepers. Now the gems, this is the same mechanism that I showed you back in episode 98, all right? We have a logic gate kicking off 10 loot chests, all right? And each loot chest is configured just like I showed you in that episode. The loot is the economy, and for the properties, we have auto-collect turned on. 
The only difference here is that instead of invoking it from a sidekick door, we're invoking it from a collectible tracker. And the collectible tracker is set up with a red gem collectible as the collectible type. And the collectible tracker basically does, <coughs> excuse me, a new logic connection. <coughs> when a collectible is collected by any, we go to the logic gate and input. Okay, so every time the player picks up a collectible, we input into the logic gate. And that will start this time delayer. <coughs> that will cause all of the 10 loot chests, <coughs> excuse me, to spawn their loot. And the time delayer here is set to a quarter second. That's the smallest interval I can make it. And when that goes off, it's going to reset the chest. And it does that with all 10 chests. So that's how you do the, the gems. And I talked about how to do that back in episode 98. Here's the actual logic for it. And again, I got a logic diagram on my blog that shows this. So that's pretty straightforward. And again, you can feed into this uh, input here. Uh, you can set up some missions where you do some tasks for townspeople and things. Um, and you want to award them with some money, you can input into this gate and they get 10 coins for doing the task. Uh, so that's really good. And if you want to give them 20, you can throw a time delayer on, on here as well. So invoke this and maybe after another second, invoke it again. And you can hit this twice and give them 20 coins. So uh, there's a lot of flexibility in that for earning money. All right. Let's talk next about crafting. And again, this is one idea that I had. I'm going to show you another one next time. But um, what we have here is I have a friendly wave generator. Uh, whoops, where is that? Right here. And again, the only difference here is we're using Merlin. You can use any character you want for your game of course. We have our dynamic trigger connected to that as an actor and once again on the properties that's set that way. And so what happens is there's twice when we talk to Merlin. The first time when we get the quest, the second time we come back after we've picked up all of the, uh, the collectibles. And so what we do with this dynamic trigger is we attempt to input into each of these two logic gates. This one and this one. This first gate, the one on the right, is set by the level starter to the open state. The other one, this one here, is set by the level starter to the closed state. And so the first time we talk to Merlin, and this attempts to input into both gates. It only goes through this gate, because that's the one that's open. And on this gate, it's going to do two things. It's going to go to the text displayer. So on output from the gate, we go to the missions category on the text displayer, and Merlin says, will you help me? The other thing this does is it goes to the replayer and does a playback, and that puts the collectibles, the resources, out into the world. All right, so then the player goes and collects the collectibles, and that's kept track of by the collectible tracker. So on here, the properties are set for the gears collectible, and I've got them showing on the radar. And uh, so when the final collectible is collected, we come and open logic gate number two. Okay. And by the way, the replayer closes that first gate. So when the playback is done, that closes gate number one. So that's how that gate gets closed. So when we collect the last collectible, that opens up the other gate so that we can come back and talk to Merlin. And this also kicks off a time delayer. And the delay on this is just set to one second. And when this time delayer goes off, we go over to the replayer 
and we clear it. That takes the collectibles back out of the world and keeps the memory low. And then when the player comes back and talks to Merlin, uh, the dynamic trigger is kicked off. It attempts to input into both gates, but this time this one's closed and that one's open. And so the dynamic trigger inputs into this gate. This gate on output goes to the storefront and it displays the shopping menu. And again, this storefront, the level starter turns this on. Our turn off button over there turns this off and the items for sale are the Lugga Beast and his price. Oops, I just deleted him. <laughs> but the price is set to zero. So if we come back over here, we can put him back. So we select him. We come in here to adjust the price and we take that to zero. And so now he doesn't cost anything. And that's how I do the crafting. That's one idea is basically go off and get the resources and then use a storefront to award the item to the player for free. Um, I've got a variation on this that I'll show you next week, but again, I don't want to do that today because we need another toy we haven't talked about yet. And the last part of this is the farming and building over here. And so we'll talk about that one here next. So I needed a way to control when the player could access the editor. I didn't want them to do this at just any time because I kind of want them to know this is where I want them to build. And so we have Goofy over here and uh, he's set up with another friendly wave generator. And the configure wave is Goofy. And uh, the other properties are set for him the same way as all the others. And again, the level starter kicks off all of these friendly wave generators when it's invoked. And the turn off button defeats all of these waves for the friendly wave generators. Once again, the dynamic trigger is connected to that as our actor. And the properties on this are set up like you see there. And when we talk to Goofy, this invokes the text displayer. So when entered by player any, we start um, let me see where is that oh yeah text displayer that's the category <laughs> we go to the start category and we he says let's get started sorry <laughs> had a brain fart there for a minute okay and the other thing this does is it kicks off a time delayer because that message is going to be on the screen for four seconds so this starts the delayer that's sitting right here and the properties on that are set to four seconds. And by the way, I don't think I showed you this, but the properties on that are set with four seconds and banner. That's on the text displayer. All right, so when this goes off, it invokes the editor manager. So when the delay is completed, we open the editor. And this is how the player, the only place the player is allowed to get into the editor is over here. And when the editor closes, then we go over to this logic gate over here. So when player one editor is closed, we input into the gate. And this is the gate that kicks off the farming. All right. One more thing about the editor, just like I had showed in uh, episode 98 at uh, 96, sorry. We're using a toy box game maker and the properties here are set the same way with everything turned off, hexagonal power disks turned on. And again, this is turned uh, on with the level starter and turned off with the off button over there, just like I talked about in episode 96. All right, so the farming, we're inputting into this gate because we only want to kick this off one time. It's going to be self-sustaining and just continue to loop and put new plants in here. And so every time we open the editor, we want to make sure uh, we don't kick off farming every time. We only want to do this the first time. So it inputs into this gate when the editor is closed. 
and uh, this is going to output and go to that time delayer. So on output, it's going to kick that off. And this is our 60 second time delayer. All right. And when the delay is completed, we're going to go back over to the logic gate and close it. And the other thing we're going to do when the timer goes off, we go to the replayer when the delay is completed and we play it back. And this replayer puts down the 15 shamrock collectibles, which represent our crops. Okay. Now this collectible tracker keeps track of picking up those crops. And this is set with the shamrock collectible as the collectible type. And we're not showing it on the radar because there's no benefit in doing that. And so now this is going to uh, input into that logic gate there. So when a collectible is collected by any player, we're going to input into this gate. And this is the exact same mechanism that we used for the gems for collecting those. The only difference is we only have two chests. So each collectible is going to award you with two gold instead of one. But we're using the same mechanism. This will kick off a time delayer, which is set to a quarter second. This will invoke each of the loot chests to spawn their loot. On output, we spawn the loot. And then when the time delayer goes off, this goes to each of the loot chests and resets them. So it's the same mechanism. Oops, didn't mean to pick that up. So it's the same mechanism, just two chests instead of ten. And then on the collectible tracker, when the final collectible is collected, we're going to kick off this time delayer on the right. And this is set to one second. And when that goes off, we clear the replayer. And this is going to invoke the other time delayer, the 60 second time delayer for the next batch of crops. And so this will wait for that. And again, if you wanted to have the player visit some locations in here first and throw a sidekick into a well to get water, um, you could feed all of those inputs into a logic and, and the output from the logic and would invoke the time delayer. So instead of this invoking that time delayer, this would turn on the radar markers where you want the player to go. This would activate the well and uh, you'd go from there. So that's how you could do the farming in here and kind of simulate that. Again, as much as I would love to be able to use the farming plots, and this was the first thought that I had, was to put the farm plot into a shop and let the player come over here and drop this and use the sidekicks to farm. Uh, again, you can't sell those crops. They're only used to feed sidekicks. And so this gives you a way to grow crops and sell them. And I think that uh, I think that works out pretty well. Well, I think that covers everything that I wanted to address about the toy box economy system in Disney Infinity 3.0. I hope you've enjoyed this part of my tutorial series, and I hope it's given you some ideas for how you could build a game like Dreamlight Valley. Don't forget, I have another example that you can look at of how to use an economy system in my Agrabah toy box in my Aladdin series, so be sure to check that out if you haven't done that already. Next time, I'll show you the other idea that I had for crafting in a toy box like this, but we're going to need a new creative toy to do that that we haven't talked about yet, so be sure to tune in next week for that. Until then, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my video today. If so, please hit the like button and leave a comment to let me know. If you have your own ideas for how to build a game like Dreamlight Valley in the toy box, let us know that in the comments too. I'm, I'd be interested in knowing, and I'm sure many of my other viewers would too. Before you go, let me remind you that I have logic diagrams on my blog for everything that I presented today. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you can do that too by clicking my photo in the lower right corner of this video. That's all for me today. Take care.